I do miss the opportunity of our greetings. Uh, my heart hurts. It does, it does. I, I enjoy it every single time. But since we can't do it for now, we'll have to skip that. But I do want to greet everybody with the love of Jesus Christ in English and in Russian. Mirvam, peace be on to you. And quick question. Does anybody remember my last sermon? Yes, no? <laughs> Show hands. Okay, we, we got a few people. Excellent. Well, that's good. That's good. Because today we're going to continue on the same theme of words. Except it's not just going to be words. We're going to be actually talking more about the heart. And the passage that I want to read, if we can open up our Bibles to Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. If you stand, please. Brood of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasures brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word man may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Amen. It's quite a um, strict passage there, isn't it? The way that Jesus Christ talks about abundance of heart. This is where I want to kind of put it out to you. It's interesting. You would never think that a heart can manipulate the tongue. You would never think that from a, such a, a muscle that pumps blood through your body that an emotion can be stored and cause people to say things that are inside their heart. And... You know, we've always been told, follow your heart. Ever got, you, you heard that before? You know, follow your heart wherever it leads you. Follow your heart for, you know, that's where your love is. Follow your heart in every, every you know, when you follow, find that person that gives you those, you know, butterflies in your stomach, you know, follow your heart. But should we be, really be following our heart? Our heart is easily deceived. Our heart is easily manipulated. Our heart stores a lot of emotions, a lot of pain and suffering. If you remember last sermon, we were talking about how you can cause wounds in a person's heart by telling them really mean and, and hurtful things and, and words. Well, what if that person now takes his wounds and instead of trying to heal them, starts to con kind of converge them onto somebody else's heart. And it starts causing pain in someone else's heart with the words that are coming out of him. You know, our hearts are very finicky. They are. They're easily manipulated, skewed. That's why God gives us wisdom. The brain. The one component that functions separate from the heart. Matter of fact, the heart couldn't even function without the brain. Or the brain could not really work without the heart either. They're intertwined. But yet the brain has the capability to discern between logic and illogic, between right and wrong. The heart it mostly works more on the feelings and emotions. That's why it's easy for people to rush into love without thinking or praying to God about it. It's easy for people to 
allow their heart to manipulate where they put their finances into instead of thinking about it. Working on impulses. But over here, Jesus speaks about what comes out of the heart. So the question is, what's in the heart? What are we putting into our hearts? Because whatever we put into our hearts, that's what comes out. So if, if we did an experiment, and let's say, I wish I had this experiment on hand, but I don't. You have this, like a vase, right, full of water. And then the vase starts pumping water out. And you throw some apple juice in that water. Now the water's got apple juice in it. You throw some Coca-Cola in it. Now you got Coca-Cola in mixed with it. Now the water has changed color and substance. You throw some tomato juice in there. Now you got different color and mixture and so forth. You throw some mud in there. Let's throw some mud in there too. You know, the mud comes up now. And, and, and what's coming out of this vase is all the stuff that you throw in there. Correct? Now just set it in a loop so that it continuously flows and all you see is this stuff that you've put in there, all those colorful you know, things, but it's not water anymore. It's dirt, junk. So if we put dirt and junk into our hearts, what do we expect from our mouth to come out? Holy spiritual words? Words of wisdom? If we turn to Matthew chapter 15, Matthew chapter 15, verse 7 is where we start. This is what Isaiah talks about Pharisees. Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me, and in vain they worship me and teach doctrine of commandments of men. And then we go to the next verse down. When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear and understand. Not what goes into the mouth defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth thus defiles the man. So from our hearts can come different things, different words. And we usually, back in the Old Testament and, and back in the old times, a lot of Israelites, they believe that what goes into your mouth, what goes into your body is what defiles you, what, what makes you sinner, what makes you dirty with sin. Because back in that time, a lot of meat that was sold in the markets or even vegetables, they were used for multiple sacrifices. And some sacrifices were used in, for idols and, and so forth. And so for Israelites... That was a, a common problem. They, they, they were understood that they can't eat sacrificial meat that was meant for an idol of some sort. So they were under this presumption that that's what defiles them, that's what makes them sinful. But Jesus comes and he says, that's not what defiles you. It's what comes out of your mouth is what defiles you. It's what you say can make you either good or bad inside of other people's eyes. What comes out of our heart? What comes out of our mouths? Last time we talked about painful words. But there's also words that glorify God, and then there's words that bring shame to God. Not to God, but to us. That God is ashamed of even being near us. Isaiah actually had this little passage here. If we turn to Isaiah chapter 32, verse 6. Isaiah 32, verse 6. The foolish person will speak foolishness, and his heart will work iniquity. To practice ungodliness, to utter error against the Lord, to keep hungry, unsatisfied, and he will cause the drink of a thirsty to fail. So a foolish person that has nothing but foolishness in his heart, that, that is dwelling in iniquities, just living his life as he thinks is fit without 
being concentrated on God and Jesus Christ, this person, it, 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 he's empty. His words, they, they, they do nothing. They're foolishness. He keeps practicing ungodliness. So what, what's in our hearts? Once again, are we the foolish person that keeps speaking foolish things and, and then constantly making jokes and always being about laughter, ha, ha, ha? It's always funny, not realizing that our jokes and our humor sometimes can be very perversive or can be very ungodly. Our, our humor can actually cause us to stray away from the word of God. Do we always have to be foolish in our words? What's in our heart? What do we put in our heart? How do we feed ourselves? You know, to me, I'll be honest. What really hits hard is if I go to work and I socialize with a lot of people at work, in my truck, a single person, but sometimes I talk to other people. And if, if I go to work and the people can't tell that I'm Christian because of the words that are coming out of my mouth, that's a problem. If I go to work and people cannot tell that I'm a Christian, that's a big problem. What is coming out of my heart? What are they seeing? What are they hearing? Am, am I praising God or am I making crude jokes? Am I praising the Lord for the things that he has done in my life today or am I just letting my tongue fly and say whatever comes to my mind without care, without thinking? What's in my heart? You know, a lot of things can be in our hearts. Whatever we put in our hearts will determine what comes out of our mouth. And it's kind of hard to get rid of it, isn't it? It's hard to get rid of whatever has been planted in your heart from the past. It's hard to get rid of those, you know, anger at somebody that has caused you pain. It's hard to get rid of Sadness from somebody has passed away. It's hard to get rid of crude humor because you're in the company of people that just love that type of humor. It's hard to get rid of any of those things. And believe me, to ourselves, to me alone, it'd be impossible to get rid of it. It would be. But there is hope. And the hope is Jesus Christ. His word and his teaching. If I feed myself on the word of God, then the word of God shall pour out of my mouth. It's interesting, if you open up to Psalms, chapter 51, Psalms 51. This is a prayer that David does. And if you can read this whole chapter, it's a wonderful chapter to read. I'm only going to go to verse 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. No one can create a clean heart in you except for Jesus Christ. No one can clean the junk, the mud, all those things we were just talking about, all the, all the dirt that's in there. No one can do it except for Christ. He is the only one who can come into your heart and cleanse it. All the bags of burdens you have in there, all the you know, anger towards somebody or, or jealousy or, or, or just, you know, hatred, bigotry, whatever you might have in your heart that's been stored there for years and years, only Christ can take it out. There's also absolutely nobody else can do it. 
That is a fact you can take to the bank. Nobody else can do it except for Christ. Because it's through his blood that we have salvation. And through our faith, his blood cleans us. Makes us hearts new. And as David says here, if you read further down, restore in me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. And then if you read verse 13, then I will teach transgressors, transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted to you. You see what he's saying here? By restoring the spirit in him, in David, what comes out of his heart? Glory to God. What comes out of his heart? Preaching about God. Helping those people that don't have God to come to him. That's a perfect example. You want more examples? Peter, Matthew, John, Mark, the 12 disciples. When they came to Christ and Christ has given them what no one else could give them. When Christ has filled their hearts, what came out of their mouths? Were they crude jokers all the time? Did they just start blaspheming God and saying that he doesn't exist? No. They went out and preached the Lord's name. They told of his love, his kind actions, and his sacrifice. That's what came out of their mouths. What came out of the mouth of a person that has accepted Jesus Christ is love and kindness, generosity. So my question to myself, and I hope you ask yourself the same question, what is in your heart? What, what, what's in my heart? Once I accepted Christ, I was clean. But what have I done since then? Did I keep my heart clean? Or did I allow more garbage back in again? Did I allow more mud to pour in again? Did I allow more jealousy to grow in my heart? For bitterness to grow in my heart? For anger to fester in my heart? Or did I keep my heart clean? I know Dimitri, a couple years back on the brothers retreat, would say, I made some pretty crude jokes back then. <laughs> and I'm not proud of that. And he knows it. What came out of my mouth back then was actually not something that I would want to share again. It's not something that I would want people to hear again. I'm actually ashamed of it. Yes, it was just a bunch of guys hanging out, we're just making jokes. But sometimes I feel that I've allowed something that was deep in my heart come out that shouldn't even be in my heart. I shouldn't even have these nasty jokes the best way I can describe it in my heart. I shouldn't have these anger building up. I shouldn't have any of this. Why? Because I'm a child of Christ. He has washed me clean. He has cleaned me. And what should be coming out of my heart, my heart is love and kindness towards every person that I meet. What should be coming out of my heart is praising God's name. Praising the Lord Jesus Christ for his salvation. What should be coming out of my heart is continuously the name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now you can decide what you want come out of your heart. You decide what comes out of your mouth. And I hope that every one of you thinks carefully. Is your heart still clean? Or is it getting gunked up? If not, I pray that you pray like David did 
Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a stead spirit, a steadfast spirit in me. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you. <clears throat> and I glorify you, Lord, for all the mercy that you have showed to me, for all the generosity that you showed to my heart. That you sent your son for me to die on the cross to wash away my sins to renew me give me a new birth that could be a new child that could be called child of Christ thank you to you Lord and be glory to you Lord there's a lot of time that has passed and a lot has happened to my heart. And some of the things that I'm not proud of, and there are things that I'm ashamed of. And I pray to you, Lord, clean my heart. Cleanse it and let it be clean again, Lord. So that these lips, this tongue can glorify you, Lord, every day of my life. That people can hear your name coming from these lips. And people can hear your love and your kindness coming from this mouth, Lord. So that my heart would not be full of lust, bitterness, anger, hatred, but be full of love, kindness, understanding, wisdom, and knowledge that you bestow upon your children, Lord. And I pray that you would Touch every heart here that is in desperate need of you, Lord. And you help those hearts understand it and cleanse them and clean it. Let your Holy Spirit guide us, Lord. Keep us away from our sinful temptations. And it would feast on your word, Lord. That our hearts would be full of your love and kindness. In Jesus Christ's name I pray to you. Amen. Amen. Amen.